starts right now. Making news this morning, calls to remove President Donald Trump from office are firing up from both sides of the political aisle after pro-Trump supporters stormed Capitol Hill. And taking a look outside with live cam, it is a cold 39 degrees and I think it's going to be pretty cool all day long. I'm going to check in with Mike right now. Hi, good morning. It's Friday. Yay. Thanks for joining us. It is January 8th. I'm excited. It's Friday. It's been kind of a long week and Mark's running a little late, but we're going to go ahead and check in with Mike about that cold weather I was talking about. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty chilly out there right now down in the 30s and yeah, it's going to be staying chilly all day. Beautiful today. Now the weekend though with uh, the clouds okay. tomorrow and then it's going to feel cooler and then just wait till Sunday. I mean, just Put the covers over your head on Sunday. That's that's the forecast for it. just <laughs> Good stay in bed all day long. Anyway, uh, beautiful morning. We've got a lot of clear skies out there, and uh, yeah, temperatures have already dropped down into the uh, upper 30s. 28 right now, Bulverde. 29, Kerrville and Comfort. Uh, just above freezing, Bernie stage, and will continue to drop down a few more degrees in the next couple of hours. And there's a hint of a breeze out there, so we do have a wind chill of 36 in town. Feels like 29 at Hondo, and the allergens. Well. Good news, Mountain Cedar went down a little bit in yesterday's reading compared to the day before. Bad news, it's still just sky high. And of course, we had some breezy conditions yesterday, so don't know if that really gave those trees another good shake, but uh, the updated count is going to be coming out just after 7 o'clock this morning. And we'll drop down uh, 37 degrees, maybe uh, maybe a little bit on the conservative side. Getting even colder than that here in town. And then later on this afternoon, we make it up to 57, so we'll be about uh, 5 degrees or so below normal. Good look looking day, but keep a jacket handy. Cold again tomorrow morning, then those clouds move on in here, so it'll just you know feel colder throughout the afternoon tomorrow. And then Sunday, anything mixed precipitation. We've been talking about that leading up to this point, so we'll get the latest on what any chances are for uh, something like a little snow or sleet well up to the north. Details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Samuel King, good morning, sir. Anything going on yet? Good morning, Mike. Uh, we did have a stalled vehicle here uh, on the west side. This is a Loop 410 at uh, State Highway 151, but uh, things look to be improving a little bit there, but just watch out for that if you're in that area. Uh, looking at 281 on the north side uh, this morning, Things look fine right now, about seven or eight minutes both directions. But uh, this weekend, uh, beginning at 2 a.m. Saturday, uh, alternating lane closures both directions between Loop 1604 and Stone Oak TPC Parkway. More work going on there, so that's something to watch out for. Uh, 35 and 10 to New Braunfels and Seguin this morning, uh, about a half hour uh, from each direction. And there's a look at the other travel times across the region. You can see that at KSAT.com. And here's a look at Transguide 1604 at Wiseman looking fine this morning. Stephanie, over to you. Thank you, Samuel. A crash in far west Bear County has sent one man to the hospital. This happened in the 10,900 block of Shanefield Road near Shanefield and Cavern Hill. That's off of West 1604. Our Stephen Cavazos is live where it happened. Good morning, Stephen. Well, good morning, Stephanie. Now that scene has cleared this morning, but we're still seeing some remnants of that early morning crash. Just take a look right over here. Down over there, you see some road flares from where that crash took place. Now, just to give you some context, we're not too far from Dr. Joe Ward Elementary School and Jefferson Middle School. Now, details are still limited right now, but we can tell you that the crash happened here at this intersection. Now, this was all earlier this morning. Now, the Bear County Sheriff's Office and Helotus PD were on the scene. They tell us the man had been driving down Shane Field with him when his car had rolled over and the man was then ejected from his car. He was rushed to a nearby hospital. Now, it's still not clear what his condition condition was at the time he was taken and it's also still not clear what caused that crash. Now again, Stephanie, those details are still limited this morning. We will work to bring you more information as they become available. For now, reporting live, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. Calls to remove President Donald Trump are firing up with less than two weeks left in his presidency. This comes in the wake of the chaos at the Capitol that led to the deaths of five people, including a police officer. CNN's Whitney Wild has the latest from Washington. The president should be removed from office. I think there's no question that America would be better off if uh, the president would uh, resign or be removed from office. Both sides of the political aisle now calling for the impeachment of President Trump or for the 25th Amendment to be invoked. The vice president can invoke the 25th Amendment today and if the cabinet votes, he's gone. They should do it now. If the vice president and the cabinet do not act, the Congress may be prepared to move forward with impeachment. As to the 25th Amendment being invoked, 
I do not believe that's appropriate at this point. Now, top White House officials are calling it quits. Transportation Secretary Elaine Chao resigning Thursday afternoon, saying in a statement, the storming of Capitol Hill has deeply troubled me in a way that I simply cannot set aside. <laughs> Federal prosecutors are looking at what role anyone, including President Trump, played in inciting the storm on the Capitol. To those who engaged in the acts of violence and destruction, you do not represent our country. And to those who broke the law, you will pay. In Washington, I'm Whitney Wild reporting. And here's an update on where we stand with coronavirus cases here at home. Another 1,100 new coronavirus cases have been reported. The seven-day average remains at more than 1,500 cases in 24 hours. The latest report shows nine new deaths. The numbers continue to rise in our hospitals. 1,376 COVID-19 patients are hospitalized, another record for the third day in a row. 394 are in the intensive care unit and 214 are on ventilators. In your morning headlines, Vice President Mike Pence plans on attending the Biden inauguration, but he says he's still waiting for his invite. That's according to sources close to the VP. But a spokesperson for the Joint Congressional Committee on Inaugural Ceremonies say that President and the Vice President are never formally invited to these ceremonies. They say they have not received word from Pence or President Donald Trump on if they will attend. Pence's decision marks another major break with President Donald Trump after the two disagreed over the vice president's role in certifying the election results. Joe Biden's inauguration will take place on January 20th. An Iraqi judge has issued an arrest warrant for U.S. President Donald Trump. The warrant was for the death of an Iraqi military leader killed during the assassination of Iranian General Qasem Soleimani. That was just over a year ago. Last week, a large crowd gathered in Baghdad at the site of the drone strike to mark the one-year anniversary. Iran has also issued an arrest warrant for President Trump over the results of the targeted airstrike. A GOP lawmaker has lost a book publishing deal amid backlash over Wednesday's deadly riot in Washington, D.C. Simon & Schuster says it will no longer publish the forthcoming book of Senator Josh Hawley. The Missouri Republican was one of the lawmakers who objected to Congress certifying President-elect Joe Biden's victory. His book, The Tyranny of Big Tech, was scheduled to hit shelves in June. In a statement, Simon and Schuster accused Hawley of playing a role in what it called a dangerous threat to our democracy and freedom. Hawley says the cancellation is an assault on the First Amendment and plans to see the company in court. Time now is 437 and 39 degrees for now. Still ahead, a first look at a response from social media giants now that President Trump is back on Twitter following a 12-hour suspension. Also next, Spurs pick up a big win last night in Los Angeles. Highlights are just ahead. Yay, go Spurs, go. And taking a look outside with live cam, it's 39 degrees. It is cold outside. You will grab that jacket and you will probably keep that with you all day and definitely all weekend. We're going to check in with Mike after the break. It is 441. A trip to Los Angeles proved to be just what the San Antonio Spurs needed to snap out of an early season slump. So two nights after beating the Clippers to snap a four game losing streak, the Spurs picked up another win at the Staples Center last night, this time defeating the Los Angeles Lakers 118 to 109. So San Antonio scored the first nine points and led the entire way. LaMarcus Aldridge led the Spurs with a season high 28 points and was one of five in double figures. DeMar DeRozan added 19 points and eight assists. The Spurs were 16 of 35 on three-pointers after making 20 from beyond the arc against the Clippers. Meanwhile, LeBron James scored 27 points for the Lakers, who had their four-game winning streak snapped. The Spurs' largest advantage was 15 points late in the first quarter, and they were up 65 to 56 at halftime. Yay! Next up, the Spurs travel to Minnesota tomorrow for the first of two straight games against the Timberwolves. And time now is 442 and 39 degrees for now. Instant pots continue to be popular. Still ahead, we'll show you some hot new accessories you can get for your countertop cooker. Also next, more response from leaders now that President Donald Trump is now back on Twitter following a suspension. And 
and welcome back. It's 444. This morning, President Donald Trump is back on Twitter after a 12-hour suspension. ABC's Rebecca Jarvis has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, I would like to begin by addressing the heinous... President Trump is back on Twitter after a 12-hour like suspension. Americans, I am outraged by the violence. Several of the president's social media accounts were frozen following his online responses to this week's riots at the Capitol. Twitter suspending his account Wednesday night following a series of tweets it described as calls to violence. We're coming for you! Requiring him to delete tweets it says violated the company's policies against interfering with elections or other civic processes and threatening to ban him permanently if he continued to violate its rules. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more on this social media battle. Plus, George Stephanopoulos and Cecilia Vega are tracking every new development in Washington. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rebecca Jarvis, ABC News, New York. Instant pots are as popular as ever, and now you can get accessories to expand their magic even more. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz checks them out. Christine Jones Howard is a registered dietitian who shares her healthy concoctions on her Instagram. She's collected a lot of appliances. I have bought the slow cooker, and then I bought the pressure cooker, and then I bought the air fryer, and of course, the toaster oven. But I would love it if it was just in one appliance. The makers of the Instant Pot have come up with accessories to make your multi cooker even more of a do it all machine. Which ones are worth your drawer space? Consumer Reports checked out 10 of them. The accessories that we checked out are are made by Instant Pot, but most of them can be used with other multi-cookers just as long as they fit in the inner pot. You can get silicone or metal egg racks to hard cook eggs with centered yolks, but testers use the metal one for two-tiered cooking, curry on the bottom, rice steaming on the top. This ceramic nonstick pot keeps your starchy foods from sticking. It's oven safe to 680 degrees. A pressure cooked whole chicken might be juicy, but it won't be brown unless you use this air air fryer lid. It turns your Instant Pot into an air fryer that can roast, bake, broil, and dehydrate. It's not compatible, though, with all models. And dessert? Testers used a springform pan to turn out perfect cheesecake. The moist cooking environment is ideal for cheesecakes and other custardy desserts. And this pan fits perfectly in the inner pot, which means you can fit as much cheesecake as possible. And CR Pros called this silicone steam rack a game changer. The handles help you lift and lower dishes into the pot. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. So it's Friday morning and the roads were pretty slow when I came in, but how are they looking now, Samuel King? Only have this uh, one problem, Stephanie, here on the west side. There is a stalled vehicle at uh, Loop 410 at 151, uh, but the, whatever delay was there seems to be clearing out a little bit. If you're on uh, 410 between 151 and I-10, about seven minutes in both directions. Speaking of I-10, we still have uh, this going on this week. Later this morning, uh, those alternating uh, lane closures or the lane closures, the HOV lanes uh, and the outside main lanes, both directions uh, between La Cantera Parkway and Ralph Fair Road later today. And taking a look at Transguide, I-10 at Woodstone uh, looking fine this morning, as does I-10 at Callahan. Stephanie? Oh my goodness, I-10 at Woodstone. It was very quiet out there. I think I yeah. saw one car <laughs> right. just going by, one lonely car. <laughs> and by, Mike, I, you know, I woke up this morning and I was colder than I was yesterday morning. I guess just knowing that the temperatures will drop Sunday, you said? Well, tomorrow it's going to be cold in the morning, but the thing is then it's going to be cloudy all day long, so you know, it won't have that little bit of sunshine. Of course, in the shade today, it's going to be really cold. And uh, then, yeah, Sunday is, oh, it's a, officially, I think, a pajama day. We'll just go with that for right now on Sunday. <laughs> I'm okay so, with that. Yeah. Hey, I don't think anybody's going to argue with that one. We've got a lot of clear skies out there this morning, and uh, that is what is helping temperatures to drop down. We've got clear skies, dry air, maybe a little bit of moisture had moved through, but there's that uh, very, very dry air, this darker shade of gray on the water vapor imagery, and that means we're going to have those vivid blue skies again today, and it's going to be picture perfect, but and it's not going to be overly warm at all. We'll only make it to the mid to upper 50s uh, here in town. So, yeah, that's definitely keep your jacket on. Obviously, nothing is showing up on the uh, satellite.
solid radar picture off to the east. Big storm system there. And then the one that we're keeping an eye on is just now basically moving into the Pacific Northwest. It was born up there in the Gulf of Alaska, and that is going to be working its way down in our direction. And of course, this is the one that may or may not bring a little bit of frozen precipitation in northern portions of the hill country. Of course, earlier in the week, it looked a little more impressive, but uh, since then, computer models have been kind of backing off a little bit. Anyway, as far as today is concerned, a lot of sunshine out there. Uh, tomorrow we start off with clear skies. Clouds work their way in throughout the day, and so obviously that will help keep temperatures down a little bit. And it's going to feel cooler with not much sunshine out there, if at all. And then by tomorrow night, a couple of showers are going to be developing, and they will continue to be to develop and become more widespread overnight and then into Sunday morning. So kind of wet if you are getting up early for early church services on Sunday. Uh, it's going to be damp and it's definitely going to be on the chilly side, although temperatures won't be as cold because the cloud cover Saturday night is going to help to act like a little bit of a blanket, but it's still going to be chilly about 40 or so here in town. So throughout the day, this computer model, everything is in the form of rain. And right up there, kind of behind the banner, you see some of that mixed precipitation. And throughout the afternoon, yeah, there may be a couple of spots. You know, this is up around Austin, northern Gillespie County, a couple of spots with some frozen precipitation. You know, some chunky rain here and there, maybe a little bit of sleet. It's really not going to add up to much of anything at all. You know, just the rain will be pretty beneficial, but as far as any frozen precipitation, no. And then we'll have some clouds overnight into Monday, but then things will be uh, clearing out and we get a, sort of another reinforcing shot of colder air coming on in here. <clears throat> Excuse me for the first part of next week. So today, beautiful day, great sunrise, and it's going to be cold though, 53 degrees at noon. High temperature gets up to 57, so it'll be about five below normal. Good looking day though, great night tonight. And then tomorrow we start off 35 degrees, a clear sky is starting off, and then the clouds going to move in there fairly quickly, and that'll hold us at 54. Notice how temperatures stay mild, relatively speaking about a normal low Sunday morning, but basically don't move throughout the day going for roughly an 80% chance of uh, some rain. So it's going to be a, a good, as I always like to say, grilled cheese and soup kind of a day on Sunday and perhaps a little bit of mixed precipitation well up uh, to the north. I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. And then it's going to be a cold start to the first part of next week. I mean, we're going to see a few freezing temperatures starting next week. Oh my goodness. So I guess you will take down your outdoor decorations at least by Saturday. Wait, yeah, it's like, is it, can <laughs> I get them today? Hopefully tomorrow. Pack thing, yeah, so. A little bit at a time. I think I'm going to start today. I know. Yeah. At least Misery loves company here. We've both got your <laughs> decorations up still. So. <laughs> it's okay. It was appropriate for this week, right? Sure. Yeah, I think That's so. That's our story and we're sticking to it. All right. Thank you, Mike. Time now is 452 and a cold 39 degrees for now. So still ahead, we preview some of the new shows available on streaming this weekend. Plus, The Office has a new home. Let's take a look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick three, five, five, four, fireball four, daily four, six, one, eight, two, fireball four. Your cash five, seven, nine, 19, 24, 27. And your Texas two step, one, 17, 21, 23, bonus ball, 20. And welcome back. It's 455. As we head into the weekend, there's a lot of new shows available to stream while you're relaxing at home. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. What? It's like your brain is on fire. Some new stuff to stream this weekend. Season two of the critically acclaimed period drama Dickinson debuts today on Apple TV+. Plus. She's so extra. The first three episodes out now with a new one each Friday. Hey, friend. Uh, I actually never heard of you before. That's really a good way to break the ice. <laughs> on Netflix, Pretend It's a City is among the new offerings. The show from Fran Leibowitz and Martin Scorsese takes an often humorous look at life in New York. A new year means a new home for one of the most popular streaming shows, The Office, now on the NBC Universal platform, Peacock. Moving over from Netflix, where show co-creator Greg Daniels says a whole new generation discovered it. I have an 11-year-old, and... Um, she and her friends, you know, have no clue that it was ever a show that started on NBC. With its move to Peacock, you can also check out a whole bunch of never-before-seen The Office extras. The shirtless Viking in horns that was part of the Capitol Hill mob, he's not the lead singer of Jamiroquai. JK tweeting out a video Thursday denying the theory that took off on social media. Now, some of you may be thinking you saw me in Washington last night, but I'm afraid 
I wasn't with all those freaks. The musician using a fake Southern accent in the video posted on Twitter saying he's not even in the U.S. And happy birthday Friday to actress Gabby Hoffman. The transparent star is 39, while Jamaican singer Sean Paul is 48. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News. And time now is 457 and 38 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, major security failure on Capitol Hill continues with top lawmakers calling for action. Plus, we're going to give you a first look at Mercedes' brand new hyperscreen display. That's ahead in Tech Bytes. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A fifth person, a police officer, now dead in connection with a violent attack on the U.S. Capitol. I'm ABC's Faith Abube, live in Washington, with details coming up. A little cooler again this morning, 38 degrees out at the airport. Looking back towards downtown, what's the weekend looking like? We're standing by, waiting for that forecast from Mr. Mike Osterhage. Hi, good morning. Happy Friday. It is January 8th and welcome back, Mark. Thank you very much. Notice the fancy new iPhone 12 Pro Max or whatever they call it. <laughs> I got it just this week and it only works right if you set the alarms properly. <laughs> You're good to go. So they're now they're fixed, but uh, yeah, I got here just a, a, a few minutes late. So, but it's good to be here with you guys on a Friday morning. It's good to have you, and it's good to have Mike as well. We've been tracking the cold weather. Oh yeah, and it's going to be uh, colder this weekend. Then we got to, it's going to be wet and cold coming up here. By the way, uh, January the eighth would have been Elvis's birthday. Aww. Eighty-six years old. Really? Today. Yeah. Didn't I, I knew it was January. I forgot the exact date. Mm -hmm. So we'll start singing Elvis tunes throughout the rest of the show. Anyway, uh, we're at 38 degrees right now. <laughs> I just got the discerning smile like, oh, God, from Samuel over there. He's like, really? Don't start singing. Uh, two points down to 32. And uh, so in theory, we can cool down a couple of more notches or so. And temperatures are going to be warming up about 20 degrees or so. But that only puts us into the mid to upper 50s later on today. So it's going to be a good looking day, though. Plenty of sunshine. The aquifer went up one tenth of a foot yesterday and the the allergens did drop down from Mountain Cedar did drop down from the previous day, but still 19,000 very high. And then, of course, yesterday was a very windy day, so we'll have to wait and see what the allergen count is going to be. And that comes out about uh, oh, just after seven o'clock this morning. Not only is it cold out there, there's still a hint of a breeze. And so we do have a slight wind chill to deal with 33 here in town. And it feels like 26 right now in Hondo just enough to add that little bit of a uh, nip to some of these temperatures and uh, throughout the rest of today it is going to be just beautiful but again staying chilly will only make it up like i said to the mid to upper 50s later on today good looking nice clear skies tonight it'll cool off pretty quickly it'll be cold tomorrow we're going to start off um, with a little bit more sunshine then the clouds move in fairly quickly maybe a couple of showers late late tomorrow night sunday wet and cold mid 40s that's it with rain pretty much all day long some of that could be mixed well up to the north um, it's going to be very few and far between i think so it's just basically going to be wet and cold on sunday and then cold next week as well details coming up in just a couple of minutes time saver traffic right now what's your favorite elvis tune sam oh boy that's a that's a good one um ah darn it i'll Love sing me all tender. for you huh Yes, Love Me Tender. That's a good one. Love Me Tender. See, there he goes. He has a lovely voice, folks. You should listen to it sometime. Uh, we had a stalled vehicle here at 410 and 151, but seems to be clearing as well as some uh, construction on 151 that was happening overnight. So nine minutes each way between 1604 and Highway 90. Looking at travel times, 26 minutes coming in from New Braunfels this morning, 30 minutes coming in from Seguin, 10 minutes on I-10 from Bernie. And looking at Transguide right now, 10 at Woodstone. Uh, that looks fine this morning, as does 10 at Callahan. Mark Stephanie, over to you. Thank you, Samuel. A rollover crash has sent one man to the hospital this morning. The crash happened in the 10,900 block of Shamefield Road near Cavern Hill off West Loop 1604. All right, Stephen Cavazos is live there this morning. Now, Stephen, do we know anything about that man's condition? New this morning, another death linked to the violent attack on the U.S. Capitol by a pro-Trump mob. A police officer has now died after being injured during confrontations with rioters. This as President Donald Trump finally appears to be accepting his election loss and as calls grow for him to step down immediately for inciting violence. ABC's Faith Abube is in Washington with the latest.
This morning, outrage as more details come to light about the deadly attack on the U.S. Capitol. Investigators finding five guns, including a military-style assault rifle, two pipe bombs, and 11 Molotov cocktails. And the human toll, more than 50 police officers hurt during the clashes with a violent pro-Trump mob. And Wednesday evening, 42-year-old police officer Brian Sicknick succumbing to injuries sustained in the battle. That making five deaths now linked to the insurrection on America's symbol of democracy. To those who engage in the acts of violence and destruction, you do not represent our country. And to those who broke the law, you will pay. In a new video, President Trump condemning the same angry mob he riled up with repeated false claims about a stolen election. We're going to walk down to the Capitol because you'll never take back our country with weakness. And by inciting sedition, as he did yesterday, he must be removed from office. While it's only 13 days left, any day can be a horror show. Democrats calling for impeachment while also looking to Vice President Mike Pence to invoke the 25th Amendment. ABC sources say Republicans are also privately discussing the option. But Thursday, the president finally accepting his election loss. My focus now turns to ensuring a smooth, orderly, and seamless transition of power. And now, with just 12 days till President-elect Joe Biden's inauguration, a seven-foot fence going up around the Capitol, and questions about police conduct. Videos appearing to show some officers moving barricades for demonstrators. And officers have arrested more than 80 people so far, but the Capitol Hill police chief now resigning because of the botched response. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. Back here at home, University Health is hoping to get more doses of the COVID-19 vaccine as soon as next week. Meanwhile, Metro Health gathering information on where people can get vaccinated and provide that information in one place. They plan to launch that website once our region receives more doses. COVID-19 incident commander Dr. Colleen Bridger says more than 60 percent of people in our community are eligible for the vaccine, which is more than one million people. But the supply isn't there to accommodate all of them at this time. And getting information out about the COVID-19 vaccine could be life-saving. District 4 Councilwoman Adriana Rocha, who represents an area with one of the highest COVID-19 case rates, is making sure the Spanish-speaking community is also informed. Districts 4 and 5 have had the highest COVID-19 infection rates. In the city's latest report that includes up to November 30th, there were nearly 8,000 COVID-19 cases reported in District 4. Uh, Garcia says things like language, transportation, and lack of technology are major barriers. Trying to put together a website where you can find all of the information in one location is going to be critical, right? That's for the folks that have access. However, it'll be critical to also have a phone line, a phone line that we communicate to others who might not have technology access to be able to call in and possibly register eventually. The councilwoman and her team are scouting different locations for new possible vaccine distribution sites. Metro Health will eventually come up with a distribution plan to help all San Antonio residents. Meanwhile, the demand for blood continues to be high in San Antonio. South Texas Blood and Tissue Center, especially in need of type O blood. At last check, there was one day supply of type O, which is used in emergencies for 48 counties and over 100 hospitals and clinics. Donors can schedule a blood donation by calling 210-731-5590 or visit SouthTexasBlood.org online. And time now is 508 and 38 degrees for now. Still ahead, Mercedes-Benz showing off their new hyperscreen display available in future vehicles. Also next, how one local group has quietly been supporting businesses affected by the pandemic shutdowns. Outside with live cam, this weekend's weather is going to be very interesting, and it's better, especially in that latter half. Mike has details coming up. 512, we've done endless stories about how small businesses or nonprofits have been impacted by this pandemic locally. One local group has been quietly supporting and helping those businesses survive. Our Sarah Costa spoke with the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce about how they have helped hundreds of businesses keep their doors open. 
The pandemic has closed bars and restaurants or caused 75 to 50 percent cuts in patrons allowed inside those locations. The same has been done to retail stores. For several months, the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce has been working behind the scenes, helping to support their members. We have been advocating for and requesting for ongoing and more direct relief here with our local leadership. The San Antonio Hispanic Chamber of Commerce has about 900 members. The majority of them, small businesses and nonprofits, and most of them have experienced an at least 20% decrease in their revenue. Which is why the chamber has held countless virtual events and meetings with their members, educating them on financial help programs and helping them build partnerships. Relief or making sure that they have what is required to pivot their current operational needs. To, to keep their doors open. Pivoting, it's exactly what the chamber has done. Before they would hold in-person networking events for members to expand their businesses. Now they hold virtual events to create partnerships for members to be able to keep their businesses open. To create those platforms, to do the warm handoffs and introductions to members that either have a resource that another member needs. Gonzalez says it's going to be a joint effort between local leadership and the community to help our local businesses stay afloat through the pandemic and hopes the community can rally behind their members. Get out there and safely get out there and support your favorite local coffee shop, your favorite local restaurant, or your favorite local retail. Those are the ones that are suffering a lot. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Right now it's 514, 38 degrees. And still ahead, more details on the decision by Facebook to ban President Donald Trump's social media account. And next, first look at Mercedes-Benz's new hyperscreen display. In today's Tech Bites, the president is hit with an indefinite ban on Facebook. CEO Mark Zuckerberg says the president will be banned on Facebook and Instagram, quote, until the peaceful transfer of power is complete. The accounts were blocked temporarily Wednesday after Trump posted a video calling for the mob to go home and telling the group, we love you. A new car from Mercedes-Benz comes with a really big screen, a 56-inch display that stretches across the entire dash. The display even has air vents. It debuts this year in a new electric sedan. Finally, SpaceX got off to an ambitious start this year, launching a new communication satellite into orbit. The rocket blasted off from Florida. Minutes later, the booster successfully landed on a ship in the Atlantic. Another SpaceX launch is scheduled for the next week. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. It's now 517, and that means there are a few more vehicles on the roads. Let's go ahead and check in with Samuel King. Hey, good morning. Uh, good morning, Stephanie. Good morning, Mark. Things uh, looking fine. We had a stalled vehicle there on 410, but that has uh, cleared up. Let's look, take a look at Bandera Road. Uh, <laughs> delay starting to build a little bit. Now 13 minutes between 410 and 1604. 10 minutes going the other direction. So watch out for that this morning. Uh, taking a look at travel times uh, around the region again. 30 minutes coming in on I-10 from Seguin. 29 minutes on 37 from Pleasanton. And here's a look at Transguide 410 uh, at San Pedro. Looks okay. And let's get one more here. 410 at Exchange Parkway. Also looking okay this morning, guys. Thank you, Samuel. Mike, when does the weather start to go downhill this weekend? Uh, it's going to be throughout the day tomorrow. Okay. I mean, it's still going to be a good looking day, but it will have a lot more clouds. I mean, mm -hmm. good looking as far as temperatures, nice and cool and, and seasonable, I guess. Uh, but we have more clouds around here, so that's just going to make it feel cooler. And then tomorrow night, we'll start to see some of that rain. And Sunday, yeah, that's just a stay in. And well, we've got how many playoff games on Sunday? Three, I think. Three tomorrow, three on three Sunday. On Sunday, mm -hmm. yeah. So Great. get something. Stay in your pajamas all day yeah. long, get something warm to eat. The glow obviously is not showing up yet. It's going to be, what, about another hour or so till we see the, uh, the glow of the sunrise, but it's going to be spectacular. And we've got some very dry air in place, of course, not only here at the surface, but upstairs. And this allows temperatures to, uh, to drop down. And the wind flow, we're going to have a little bit of a light northeasterly wind today. But as we go into tomorrow, wind flow is going to come basically out of the uh, east to southeast. And that's going to help to bring in some more humidity. But it's not as though we're going to see any huge spike in the humidity 
at all. Uh, it's just going to help with the extra humidity out there to help with some of the uh, the showers that are going to be coming in here on Sunday. And as far as rain chances, it is definitely going to be going up. It's almost a sure thing that we have rain around here on Sunday, perhaps mixed in again up to the north with a little bit of uh, maybe some couple of snowflakes or a little bit of sleet. But the uh, and the reason why we've been kind of, you know, iffy about what's going to be happening because the storm system that is going to or the low that's going to give us that chance for rain and maybe something mixed in is just now about to move in to the Pacific Northwest. It's been sitting out there in the Gulf of Alaska for the past couple of days. Here's the computer model as we go in through the weekend today, just gorgeous out there. We've got a lot of uh, sunshine, clear skies tonight and then tomorrow morning starting off as well. But the, like I said, starts to go downhill with the clouds moving in throughout the day. So that will help keep temperatures down a little bit compared to today. Obviously, with no sunshine out there, it's going to feel colder throughout the day. Some rain moves in tomorrow night and then uh, Sunday morning. Yeah, a lot of rain around here and it could have a, you know, a decent rainfall when it's all said and done. Then as we go on through the day on Sunday, this is even mid afternoon. It is all still in the form of liquid precipitation, according to this computer model, and a lot of them are now in agreement. Maybe a little, you know, speck here and there of some uh, frozen precipitation, and that's going to be possible then going into Sunday evening. But again, we're talking up here around Austin, uh, northern Blanco County, northern Gillespie County. So. For most of us, it's we're not going to be seeing anything. Then we are going to start to clear out as we go into the overnight hours Sunday into Monday and we get another reinforcing shot of some uh, pretty cold air. So it's going to stay chilly throughout most all of next week. Six 53 degrees, beg your pardon, today at noon with sunny skies and then later on this afternoon, a high temperature up to 57. Normal high is 62, five below normal. Good looking day though. Keep a coat handy and you're going to get a lot of use out of it over the next few days. Tomorrow we start off very cold and then the clouds move in throughout the day, so that'll hold us just in mid 50s. Uh, it's not going to be as cold Sunday morning. Now it's going to feel colder just because of the, uh, the all the moisture in the atmosphere. 40, but then temperatures really don't go anywhere throughout the day. Rain pretty much all day long, perhaps a little bit of mix up to the north and then it gets colder next week. We're looking at some more freezing temperatures around the area next week. Wow, okay. Mm hmm It's January. All right. Those who wanted the January weather, they're getting their wish now. Love it. <laughs> Example, Mike. Because you know it won't be long. Never mind. We'll, well just talk about the cold weather. We know that. We know that. <laughs> Turtlenecks versus flip-flops for now. Right now, 521, 38 degrees. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, how one actress could set an Oscars record and the puppy bowl. Yay, look at them. It's coming back. We're going to have a preview. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, five, five, four, fireball four. Daily four, six, one, eight, two, fireball four. Cash five, we have seven, nine, 19, 24, 27. And your Texas two step, one, 17, 21, 23. Bonus ball 20. Good luck. Our health matters more than ever. That's why the new MyWW Plus is our most holistic weight loss program ever. The app helps you take the food you have and gives you creative ideas for meals. You can choose any workout you want to fit with your time frame. There are a ton of zero point foods that I love. I never feel restricted. With the new tools, my mindset has completely changed. More holistic, more personalized, more weight loss. The new program from WW, Weight Watchers Reimagined. Kickstart your weight loss with the WW Triple Play. Offer ends January 11th. Never run dry of killer attitude or hydration. Neutrogena Hydro Boost, the number one hyaluronic acid moisturizer, delivers two times the hydration for supple, bouncy skin. Neutrogena. Does your vitamin C last 24 hours? Only nature's bounty does. New Immune 24 Hour Plus has longer lasting vitamin C plus herbal and other immune superstars. Only from Nature's Bounty. In today's entertainment report, we've got a possible Oscars record and an actress moving behind the camera. Plus, the best doggone football game of the year is coming up. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. It's about you having to face this. I am and... facing this. I am facing it! I am facing this! Well, I don't think you are.
Pieces of a Woman stars Ellen Burstyn and Vanessa Kirby are both drawing Oscar buzz for the intense drama. A nod for Burstyn would make history. At 88, she'd be the oldest actor ever nominated for an Academy Award. Pieces of a Woman is now playing on Netflix. Look at me when I'm talking to you. Megan Good makes her feature directing debut with If Not Now, When, which debuts Friday. Good also co-stars in the film, but says she's being more selective lately about her acting roles. So for me, this just, it feels like a natural progression to say, okay, how can I still be creative the way that I want to and be intentional about my voice and about my purpose and about my walk and, um, and hopefully encouraging and inspiring other people. Let the puppy bowl begin. Team Rough and Team Fluff are back. Puppy Bowl 17 is set to kick off on Super Bowl Sunday, February 7th on Animal Planet and Discovery Plus. Taking the field, 70 puppies from 22 shelters, all up for adoption. Making Fetch Happen in Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. <laughs> We're celebrating the fact that's one thing that's not been changed at all by the pandemic. Yes, yes. Thank goodness, right? <laughs> thank goodness indeed. 527, 38 degrees on your Friday morning. And still ahead on GMSA, President Donald Trump's term officially ends on January 20th. House on lawmakers are trying to get him out before that date. Plus, what doctors are saying about the effectiveness of vaccines on new coronavirus variants and why they say you shouldn't be too worried. And KFC says it's made the best chicken sandwich ever. We're going to tell you when you can get one. Well, it looks pretty good, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. Good morning. It is Friday, January 8th. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. And it is cold outside, and you will need that jacket pretty much all day. Uh, things are going to get weird around here weather-wise as we go into the latter part of the weekend. Here's Mike with more on weird. Yeah, not <laughs> <laughs> expert on weird. Not that hey. you're weird, Mike. You're yeah. not weird at all. Yeah, if the, if the name fits. Anyway, uh, never said I wasn't weird, though. Uh, we It's going to get a little bit weird, but not that much. Uh, weird being uh, talking about a little bit of frozen precipitation. There may be some in northern portions of the hill country on Sunday, but primarily it's just going to be wet and cold on Sunday. Just clear and cold this morning, and I think it's wishful thinking. It almost looked like things were trying to lighten up there a little bit along the horizon. Not quite yet, but it's going to be a spectacular sunrise like yesterday. Temperature 38 degrees, dew points 32, so we can still drop down a little bit, but we've got a slight breeze out there this morning. Just enough as winds out of the uh, north to north Northeast, you know, five, six, seven miles per hour to add a little bit of a bite to these temperatures. So it feels like 33 in town, 27 is a wind chill in Balverde as well as uh, comforts, and 26 is what it feels like right now in Hondo. Mountain Cedar, it is way up there now. Of course, this reading was taken yesterday prior to the breezy conditions we had yesterday. So we'll have to see if uh, that really shook up those trees a lot more. That update account is going to be coming out just after 7 o'clock this morning. 53 at noon, 57 for a high temperature today. Again, a good looking day today and clear skies and lots of clouds and lots of uh, well, rain on Sunday. And it's going to be just cold on Sunday. One of those bone chilling kind of days. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Samuel King, anything on the roads yet, sir? Not quite yet, Mike. Things looking okay. And let's take a look here at 281 uh, North, uh, eight minutes from 1604 to Belverde Road, seven minutes going the other way. And coming up this weekend again, alternating lane closures on 281, part of the ongoing project between uh, 1604 and Stone Oak TPC Parkway that begins uh, Saturday morning, 2 a.m., runs all the way through the weekend. So Monday morning at 5 a.m., so something to watch out for there. And here's a look at Transguide I-10 at Callahan looking fine uh, this morning, as does 37 at Jones. Mark, Stephanie, over to you. Thank you, Samuel. San Antonio police believe they have caught up with a suspect in the murder of an 11 year old girl. The victim was riding in a car with her family that was sprayed with gunfire on the northeast side this summer. Our Katrina Weber is live at the Bear County Jail where that suspect is being held on a capital murder charge. Uh, Katrina, you say this investigation isn't over yet. Well, that's right. According to the arrest affidavit, police are still looking for a second gunman. The man who they have in custody, the man who they arrested last night, is 22-year-old Demoria Keys. He was booked into jail on a charge of capital murder in this case, the death of an 11-year-old girl. We spoke with Danita Phillips's grief-stricken parents shortly after this happened back in August. They told us they were at a loss to explain why someone would shoot at their car as they drove along Walsham Road. 
Danita was one of several children inside the vehicle at the time. Her parents told us that her siblings had to watch as she died in front of them. The affidavit says police meticulously combed through surveillance video to find clues, and they say they also got some tips which pointed them towards Keyes as a suspect. Now, the affidavit again mentions a second suspect, but it says police are still working to identify him. What that court document does not offer yet is an explanation for the shooting. Reporting live at the Bear County Jail, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. The Trump administration officially ends in 12 days, but after the deadly riot at the U.S. Capitol, some leaders say President Donald Trump should be removed from office before January 20th. At least five people have died, including a woman who was shot as well as a Capitol police officer. CNN's John Lawrence reports. There's a new fence being erected at the Capitol. But it won't block out the memory of what happened Wednesday. It certainly was a dark day for our democracy. The day after inciting the crowd that stormed the Capitol, President Donald Trump denounced the rioters in a taped speech. To those who engaged in the acts of violence and destruction, you do not represent our country. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Senate Democratic Leader Chuck Schumer are calling on Vice President Mike Pence to invoke the 25th Amendment, which could remove the president from office. We are in a very difficult place in our country as long as Donald Trump still sits in the White House. Adam Kinzinger was the first Republican House member to publicly support the idea. The president has become unmoored, not just from his duty, or even as of, but from reality itself. As the remainder of Trump's tenure is discussed, some members of the administration are resigning, including Education Secretary Betsy DeVos, Transportation Secretary Elaine Chao, and former White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney, who was serving as a special envoy to Northern Ireland. I, I, can't, I can't do it. I can't stay. Those who, who choose to stay, and I have talked to a couple of them, are choosing to stay because they are concerned that the president might put someone in to replace them that could make things even worse. I'm I'm John Lawrence reporting. Boeing says it will pay $2.5 billion to settle criminal charges. It defrauded regulators about the 737 MAX jet. The settlement with the U.S. Justice Department stems from when Boeing won approval for the plane from the Federal Aviation Administration. The government's filing points to two employees in particular. The U.S. attorney accuses them of, quote, misleading statements, half-truths, and omissions regarding the 737 MAX. They say misinformation prevented the FAA from ensuring public safety, resulting in two crashes, in which hundreds of people died. The settlement includes a criminal fine of about $244 million and half a billion dollars for victims' families. The rest is for Boeing's airline customers. SpaceX is celebrating its first launch of 2021. A broadcast communication satellite was launched from the Space Launch Complex at Cape Canaveral last night. The satellite is supposed to improve broadband data networks across a large area that includes Turkey, Europe, the Middle East, as well as North and Central West Africa. The technology is also supposed to provide television broadcast services to those areas. It's now 537, 38 degrees. And if you're planning to do some fishing soon, we're going to tell you about a special program in Texas that rewards you for reporting some of your biggest catches. And next, how worried should you be about the new variants of the coronavirus? What doctors are saying about the effectiveness of the current vaccines. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, it is January, that's for sure. It's 38 degrees out there. It is cold and it's going to be cold pretty much all day. We will check in with Mike for the full details later on. While two coronavirus vaccines continue to roll out across the U.S., two new variants of the virus have also emerged. Here's CNN's Mandy Gaither on why doctors say you shouldn't worry too much about them. Two new variants of the coronavirus seem to make the virus more easily spread. One first identified in Britain has already been discovered in the U.S. While doctors worried it might have mutated enough to evade vaccine protection, the evidence now suggests it has not. However, the jury's still out on the second new variant first seen in South Africa. We don't want that strain to start running around the world and causing more damage. 
Dr. William Schaffner, former CDC official and professor of infectious diseases at Vanderbilt University, says over the next few weeks, virologists will be studying to see how much of a match there is between this new variant first identified in South Africa and our vaccines. Scientists say it has to do with where the changes are and how they affect the shape and function of the virus. All current vaccines target what is known as the spike protein, the structure the virus uses to get into the cells it attacks. But mutations that change the way that spike protein looks can also help hide it from the immune system, making antibodies less effective. If there's not a match or there's sufficient deviation, then the manufacturers will have to go back to work and create yet another vaccine, hopefully one that will cover both strains. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. And time now, it's 541 and 38 degrees for now. Well, if you're one of the types who would rather be fishing, listen up. Up next, we'll tell you about that program that can reward you with some big prizes if you reel in some big catches right here in the Lone Star State. Nice trout. And welcome back. It is 544 in your morning consumer headlines. A new year, new record low record low mortgage rate. That's according to Freddie Mac, which says mortgage lending rates dropped to another record low last week. The federally chartered mortgage investor reports the average interest rate on a 30 year fixed rate mortgage fell to 2.65 percent. It's the lowest level in the nearly half century that the mortgage giant has been publishing the survey. And it's the 17th historic low for the rate in less than a year. Meanwhile, the 15 year fixed rate mortgage dropped to 2.16 percent. The 30 and 15 year rates are nearly a full percentage point lower than a year ago. The low rates have brought home buyers into the market, but high demand and low inventory has raised home prices. Fast food giant KFC has unveiled what it's calling the best chicken sandwich ever. The sandwich feature is a quarter pound, all white, double breaded, extra crispy chicken breast filet. It comes on a toasted brioche bun with pickles and mayo or a spicy sauce. It's available in select markets right now. The company will roll out the sandwich across all 4,000 of its U.S. locations by the end of next month. KFC says every sandwich will be made when ordered and therefore will always be fresh and hot. The sandwich itself costs just under $4. The combo runs about $7. Jeep is showing off the newest version of one of its popular vehicles. The Fiat Chrysler Automobiles Group unveiled the 2021 Jeep Grand Cherokee. New Grand Cherokee for the first time ever seats six to seven people. The SUV will include more than 10 advanced safety security features such as 360 degree surround view, night vision cameras and digital rear view mirrors. The new year brings a new opportunity for fishing enthusiasts here in Texas. This morning we're talking about the Toyota Share Looker program and why you should participate. This month is the 35th season of the Toyota Share Lunker program, which is a coordinated effort with Texas Parks and Wildlife. It's a year long program that offers four levels of participation for catching bass over eight pounds or 24 inches in Texas. During the first three months of the year, anglers who reel in a 13 pound bass or larger can loan it to the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department for the Share Lunker Selective Breeding and Stocking Program. Once a lunker is reeled in, anglers need to enter the catch information on the Toyota Share Lunker mobile app. Those who catch and donate one of these Lunkers earn legacy class status receive a catch kit filled with merchandise, a 13 pound legacy decal for their vehicle or boat, VIP access to the Toyota Share Lunker annual awards event, and a high quality replica of their Lunker fish. These fishermen will also get entered into two separate drawings, a legacy class drawing and the year end grand prize drawing. Both drawings will award the winner a $5,000 dollar Bass Pro Shops shopping spree and an annual fishing license. So for more information on this program or to report a fish, anglers can call the Share Lunker hotline. That's 903-681-0550, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And this part of the program, it says, runs through April 1st. I know a variety of guys here in South Texas that have caught massive, like once in a lifetime, largemouth bass and have won the Share Lunker program. It's pretty cool. You get this cool Toyota Share Lunker certificate. Oh, that's cool. You get a gift box, and I think some guys have won fish rods and stuff like that so it's a really cool program but uh, it's for the biggest of the bigs what they're trying to do is perpetuate the species right, yeah right. well yeah. that's pretty cool and so it's till April 
Well, that's what it this says here. Program. I think it's year round, though. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, you would know. <laughs> Let's check traffic right now. 548, 38 degrees. Well, if you are taking a trip uh, to go fishing or somewhere this weekend, note that gas prices are ticking up. They're at $1.99 as of this morning. If it gets to $2, that'll be the first time since March, so 300 days. That's the largest stretch, longest stretch in Texas since 2015. A 190 in Bear County, so they're still cheaper here, but 230 to national average. Now, parts of the Hill Country are already at $2 per gallon. That's something you might notice when you drive around. Uh, Traffic-wise, things are looking pretty good uh, this morning. We still have that uh, construction this week, uh, beginning at 9 today, between uh, Lock and Terra Parkway and Rafael Road on I-10, especially the HOV lane, so something to watch out for there. Uh, Fredericksburg Road this morning uh, in the Medical Center area, looking good 14 minutes from uh, Woodland to Hebner, 12 minutes from Hebner to Woodlawn and Transguides 10 at Callahan looking good this morning as it has uh, throughout the morning as does 37 at Jones guys. Thank you, Samuel. Uh, aircraft in the sky behind you, Mike Osterhage. Plane spotters can yep. pick that silhouette from miles away. Yep. C-130. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. You ever flown on one of those? I have not been on I, C-130. I actually got to ride on one one time yeah? when I was living up in uh, Green Bay. So I think what's kind of cool is uh, the new propellers they've got on all those C-130s now. And, I mean, it's been around forever. And yeah. how many yes. variations now? Is it up to the uh, HJ? I don't remember, but it continues to be a workhorse like of the U.S. Air Force for sure. Oh, still, still is. And the uh, um, Blue Angels just got a new one. Yes, they did. I think they bought it off Britain, but, yeah, they got a, a new... Uh, um, Fat Albert. So, all right, we've got a lot of clear skies as we digress talking about airplanes here. It's going to be a beautiful sunrise this morning. No glow yet, but uh, temperatures 27 Balverde, very cold. Helotus, uh, Bernie stage. Your backyard may obviously be freezing because that's only that one thermometer out there, but a lot of freezing readings around here. And uh, we won't get down to freezing tomorrow morning, um, but, or excuse me, by Sunday morning. That's very important because that's when we're going to have some, uh, some rain around here, but then starting off next week, we're looking at a better chance actually for some uh, some freezing readings. All right, got a lot of dry air upstairs in the atmosphere, this darker shade of gray, and so that's why we're going to have some beautiful blue skies today, but we'll see some more moisture coming on in here aloft in the atmosphere overnight and tomorrow, and this is going to help with the extra cloud cover around here and pretty much cloudy skies uh, throughout the afternoon after a somewhat clear start in the morning tomorrow. And uh, throughout today, you know, there could be one or two clouds out there to the west. That'll be about it. And again, tomorrow morning starts off mostly clear. Then we have the clouds moving on in here. A little bit of rain is going to start to develop late tomorrow night and in the overnight hours. And then plenty of rain around here on Sunday morning. Like I said, temperatures are going to be well above freezing Sunday morning and throughout the day. That's, you know, it's been kind of going back and forth this this week as far as uh, how soon the colder air is going to be moving in here when the moisture is going to be getting on out. And earlier in the week, one of the computer models especially was um, very, very bullish about getting some freezing precipitation up there in the hill country. And now this computer model uh, is not really too anxious about it. Yeah, there will be a little bit of uh, maybe some sleet, a little bit of snow mixed in in northern parts of our viewing area, well up to the north, but uh, that's pretty much going to be it. I think it's going to be the exception rather than the rule, and that will extend in through the evening hours of Sunday. Then by Monday morning, some clouds around here will start to clear out as we go into uh, the rest of the day on Monday. We get sort of a reinforcing shot of cooler air, and there is some pretty cold air now brewing up here in southern Canada and the northern United States. And it looks like a big chunk of that is going to start to kind of move down into the Great Lakes area. And that will help to keep us on the colder side, uh, especially going into next week. 53 degrees today at noon. Lots of sunshine out there. A really good looking day. And keep coat handy all day long because it's going to be cold. 57. Plenty of sunshine, though. Really nice looking. Beautiful night tonight. Tomorrow morning, uh, we're going to have some clear skies, and then we'll see the clouds move in here fairly quickly throughout the day, and that's going to hold us at 54 degrees. So it'll be definitely a chilly one. To rain tomorrow night, and then rain throughout the day on... I did it again, but we got back to the... Uh, the picture here. Let me get to the <laughs> let me get nice, to the long range forecast. I know you it's know a nice my, picture that Yvonne sent in. Thank you know you, me and my airplanes here. Uh, <laughs> 45. That's it on Sunday. Maybe a little bit of mix up to the north. And then we get that colder air coming on in here, and we're going to see uh, some good, a lot of freezing temperatures starting off the days next week. Wow, that 45. That's it. And rain. And rain. I thought you were saying, well, because of the plane. That too. <laughs> that too. That's always for us. Uh, yeah. 553, 38 degrees. 
And coming up, we are going to talk about the popular survival horror indie game that gets its first five titles bundled into a single game experience. The Five Nights at Freddy's franchise launched in 2014, with numerous sequels and spin-offs released since. The first five titles in the series are now playable together in Five Nights at Freddy's Core Collection. The early games are based around a fictional children's entertainment eatery establishment, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, with the first two games of the series focused on the player being an overnight security guard who comes face to face with murderous animatronic characters. As the series progresses through parts 3, 4, and the more lengthy titled Five Nights at Freddy's Sister Location, players face different scenarios involving the haunted animatronics. The games feature plenty of jump scares and are rated T for Teen by the Entertainment Software Ratings Board. Playing with the lights on in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. The Mays Family Foundation making a big donation to Hemisphere. I'm Sarah Costa. Coming up tomorrow on GMSA, how that donation will be used to beautify this area. We would like to invite you to join us for our virtual mental health awareness town hall. It's a hardship of millions of Americans uh, to live with and have trouble talking about. We'll have a panel of experts to explain mental illness and share how you can make a difference. It's all Wednesday, January 27th at 2 p.m. And you can find more information at ksaccommunity.com. Well, still to come on GMSA, business booming in the home services industry right now. Coming up on GMSA, we'll tell you about your options if you're looking to start a new career in the new year. And Trans Guide, let's see how things are looking out there right now. At 410 and Exchange Parkway, the Friday morning commute is off and running. Samuel will get us up to speed after the break. We are learning more about a rollover crash that happened here in far West Bear County. More on that coming up. New study out of Texas showing that Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine is just as effective against the new coronavirus variants. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, it feels like January. It is 36 degrees. It is chilly and it's going to be cold. We're going to check in with Mike right now. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning, everybody. It is Friday. It is January 8th. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us this morning. And oh, yeah, definitely grab the jacket. Uh, there was no question about that. I was even cold before I stepped outside this morning. That's right. Be prepared, though. Things are going to change uh, in the weather even further. Mm -hmm. Add in some precipitation to the mix. And Mike Osterhage is here with more on that. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. When you get the, the rain, then you get that damp chill. Mm -hmm. You know, dry air is actually kind of an insulator. But when you get that damp, then it conducts the heat away from your body. That's the bone chilling part. <laughs> That's the bone chilling. So get ready for Sunday. Now, tomorrow we'll have a lot more clouds. Today is just going to be a beautiful day and eh, maybe a little bit of a glow. I'm kind of pushing things there, the, uh, the sunrise. But look at that. We're down to 26 right now in Kerrville, Rock Springs, 34, 27 in Fredericksburg. And yeah, keep a jacket all day long just because temperatures really aren't going up all that. I mean, we'll be in the mid to upper 50s, but still, that's going to be pretty cold. And there's a little bit of a wind chill to deal with this morning. It feels like 23 in Hondo and 32 out there. Just a hint of a breeze. And as far as the allergens, Mountain Cedar, it did go down yesterday from the previous day, but it's still obviously sky high and of course the updated count is going to be coming out in about uh, say an hour hour and a half and this morning temperatures will stay right about where they are fluctuated degree or two and with all that sunshine we will make it up into the uh, mid low to mid 50s and then mid to upper 50s later on this afternoon so we'll be about five degrees below normal a little bit of a breeze out of the northeast at five to uh, ten miles per hour clear skies overnight tonight to start off the day then the clouds come in here and like uh, we were talking about it's going to be cold and even colder as the weekend progresses details in just a couple of minutes time saver traffic right now samuel king and just a quick glance at the map i see some bear but any accidents? No, we had a couple earlier, but uh, things are looking pretty clear right now, Mike, and, and that's a good thing if you're heading out and have plenty of time to get where you're going. For instance, an in I-10, if you're coming in uh, from Bernie to downtown, 24 minutes right now, so that's looking good for you there. And coming from 1604 into downtown, it's uh, 13 minutes and 12 minutes there if you're going the other way, maybe a reverse commute, if you will. And also looking across the region, uh, we mentioned Bernie, 20 minutes on 90 coming in from 
Castroville, 17 minutes on 35 from Lytle, 28 minutes on 37 from Pleasanton. And here's a look at Transguide, uh, 281 at Grayson, looking fine this morning. Guys, over to you. Thank you, Samuel. A rollover crash has sent one man to the hospital this morning. That crash happened on Shanefield near Cavanaugh Hill, just outside Loop 1604 on the northwest side. Stephen Cavazos is live this morning. Do we know anything more about the man's condition? Well, Mark, it's still not clear what that man's injuries were when that crash happened. Now, we do know that the Bear County Sheriff's Office, as well as the Lotus PD, arrived here on the scene, and they say it was during that crash that the man was actually ejected from his vehicle. Now, we know that he was driving somewhere here along Shanefield Road when, and near Cavern Hill when his car had rolled over. Now, there's still many unknown factors surrounding the crash. It's not clear what his conditions was before it all happened or his speed had played a factor. Now, as we pointed out earlier in the show, the scene has obviously cleared up, but we're still seeing some remnants right here behind me. If you take a look, look right over here, we're still seeing some road flares that were actually put out a little earlier this morning. Deer uh, down here on Shane Field. Now, again, there's still no word yet uh, when if there was someone else traveling with that man when the crash happened. Of course, we'll bring you more details as they become available. For now, reporting live, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. Local health officials are reporting 1,170 new cases of COVID-19 in Bear County. Nine more people have died from the virus in our community. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says the seven-day average is still above 1,500 cases a day. More than 1,300 people are still being hospitalized with coronavirus complications. Yesterday, 207 people were admitted to local hospitals, which the mayor says is a record high for a 24-hour period during the pandemic. Meanwhile, Metro Health will be launching a website to help people find places where they can get a vaccine once there is enough supply for the public. Speaking of the vaccine, one local leader making sure her constituents are getting life-saving information about COVID-19 vaccines. District 4 Councilwoman Adriana Rocha Garcia is making sure the Spanish-speaking community in her district has equal access to info. District 4 is on the city's southwest side, an area with one of the highest COVID case rates in San Antonio. In the city's last report, which covered up to November 30th of last year, there were nearly uh, there were nearly we're missing some information there. Garcia says things like language, transportation and lack of technology are major barriers. Trying to put together a website where you can find all of the information in one location is going to be critical, right? That's for the folks that have access. However, it'll be critical to also have a phone line, a phone line that we communicate to others who might not have technology access to be able to call in and possibly register eventually. By the way, that information we were trying to tell you, there's, there were nearly 8,000 cases alone in District 4. The councilwoman and her team are also scouting different locations for new possible vaccine distribution sites. A new study suggests that Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine is effective against new coronavirus strains. Two new strains considered more contagious were first identified in South Africa and the United Kingdom. Researchers at Pfizer and the University of Texas Medical Branch used a mutation found in both strains to create a version of the virus. They tested it against blood from 20 people who had received two doses of the vaccines as part of the clinical trial. This study, which has not been peer reviewed, did not test the vaccine against the full array of mutations, but researchers noted that both Pfizer and Moderna used technology that would allow them to quickly adapt for mutations. In your morning headlines, the FBI has released a list of some of the individuals responsible for actions in the U.S. Capitol riot. The Bureau's Washington office tweeted a bulletin identifying 10 people the agency say it said made unlawful entry into the Capitol building itself. The FBI is asking for information on the suspects they say could be connected to pipe bombs being placed around the nation's capital. The agency is offering $50,000 for information on the suspect. At least 23 people are out of jail this morning after being arrested during the riots at the U.S. Capitol building on Wednesday. A Washington, D.C. Superior Court judge released them after they appeared in court to face charges. Those charges range from violating curfew to more serious charges like carrying a gun without a license and assault on a police officer. The judge ordered them not to return to Washington until their next court appearance on June 10th. The top federal prosecutor says to expect more charges as the investigation continues. 
Education Secretary Betsy DeVos has resigned in the aftermath of Wednesday's riot in Washington. DeVos released a statement saying there's no mistaking the president's rhetoric played in the role in the violence. She's the second cabinet member to resign over the chaos in the Capitol. Transportation, Transportation Secretary Elaine Chao also quit after Wednesday's events. Neither DeVos or Chao will be able to act under the growing calls to implement the 25th Amendment, which requires half the cabinet to say the president is unfit to hold office. Book publisher Simon & Schuster will not publish a book by Republican Senator Josh Hawley of Missouri. Senator Hawley was one of the lawmakers who objected to Congress certifying the Electoral College results. His book was scheduled to be released in June. The publisher released a statement accusing the senator of playing a role in a, quote, dangerous threat to our democracy and freedom, end quote. Senator Hawley says the move goes against his First Amendment rights, even though the U.S. Supreme Court has ruled that the amendment does not apply to non-government businesses. Vice President Mike Pence plans on attending President-elect Joe Biden's inauguration, but he is apparently still awaiting an invite. That is according to CNN. However, a spokesperson for the Joint Congressional Committee on Inaugural Ceremony says the president and vice president are never formally invited to the ceremonies. They say they haven't received word from either if they will attend. And the Spurs are really loving Los Angeles, winning their second game in a row in the city. Yeah, great news this morning, Spurs fans. Spurs topped the Lakers last night, 118-109. Game started with both teams locking arms on the court during the anthem following the events that took place at the Capitol. And once the game started, Spurs jumped out to a big lead. Three-point shooting helped the Spurs see their lead hit 14 points at its biggest. Lakers would give up 16 three-pointers to the Spurs, matching the team's season high. LaMarcus Aldridge led the silver and black with 28 points. LeBron James put up 27 for L.A. Spurs will leave the Golden State and head to Minnesota today. They play the Timberwolves tomorrow night. Tip-off scheduled for 7 o'clock. Go Spurs go. Exciting. Go Spurs go. Time now is 6.09 and 36 degrees for now. We've heard a lot about the 25th Amendment over the past couple of days, but as we will see, our understanding of the amendment likely comes from Hollywood. Closer look. And San Antonio's Hispanic Chamber of Commerce working to keep businesses open during the pandemic. After the break, we're going to see how. And outside with live cam, a weekend forecast we really need to pay attention to. Things, as we've been saying, are going to get really unusual weather-wise. Much more January-like goes again in the latter part of the weekend. Michael, have details coming up. The pandemic has closed bars and restaurants or caused 75 to 50 percent cuts in patrons allowed inside those locations. The same has been done to retail stores. For several months, the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce has been working behind the scenes, helping to support their members. We have been advocating for and requesting for ongoing and more direct relief here with our local leadership. The San Antonio Hispanic Chamber of Commerce has about 900 members. The majority of them, small businesses and nonprofits, and most of them have experienced an at least 20% decrease in their revenue. Which is why the chamber has held countless virtual events and meetings with their members, educating them on financial help programs and helping them build partnerships. Relief or making sure that they have what is required to pivot their current operational needs to, to keep their doors open. Pivoting, it's exactly what the chamber has done. Before, they would hold in-person networking events for members to expand their businesses. Now they hold virtual events to create partnerships for members to be able to keep their businesses open. To create those platforms, to do the warm handoffs and introductions to members that either have a resource that another member needs. Gonzalez says it's going to be a joint effort between local leadership and the community to help our local businesses stay afloat through the pandemic and hopes the community can rally behind their members. Get out there and safely get out there and support your favorite local coffee shop, your favorite local restaurant, or your favorite local retail. Those are the ones that are suffering a lot. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Friday morning, 6.15. So earlier, Samuel, you said, you know, we had time to get a taco because roads were looking okay. How about now? Yes. Okay, good. Taco, coffee, whatever you want. 
uh, this morning because there's a lot of uh, uh, green on the map. Some congestion here in Jared that's going to build over the next hour or so. So we'll keep on top of it. Uh, here's a military drive on the south side. Uh, 10 minutes now between 37 and 35. Uh, 10 minutes going 35 to 37. And here's a look at Transguide 281 at Grayson. Looking fine this morning as is 410 at Fredericksburg. Had a big accident there yesterday, but this morning uh, things looking pretty clear. Guys? Very time, good. Time for a bus stop forecast, Mike. I no, we got to keep those first. jackets. Who's buying the tacos? <laughs> um, today? Uh, today? Today? There's like cr there's crickets. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> crickets, anyway. Crickets in the studio. I think it's your turn, Mike. Let's look at the bus stop. For <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you might want to warm up uh, the bus and your car before you head out this morning because uh, we've got temperatures that are down in 30s, even 20s in parts of the hill country. It's uh, definitely cold out there. Gorgeous day today, but it is going to stay chilly with temperatures highs only in the uh, mid to upper 50s around the area. And uh, we are going to be seeing these uh, temperatures get even colder over the weekend. Take a look at this uh, live or this uh, KSAC Connect picture and you can kind of see it just is sort of hidden in there a little bit. A beautiful, beautiful cardinal. Kind of hard to see, but you can see his eye glowing right there. It's a great shot. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. All right, now we're starting to see the glow of the uh, sunrise. It's going to be coming up in just over an hour, right around 7.30 or so this morning. And nothing is obviously showing up on radar, so we have plenty of sunshine and clear skies throughout the day, maybe one or two clouds or so. There's the system which gave us the rain and brought the front through here a couple of days ago. Now you look upstream and basically here's the rest of today. Some clouds will be coming on in here tomorrow and we'll also see a little bit more moisture trying to come in here from the, uh, the Gulf of Mexico. Not a whole lot, but the system which is going to bring cold air for next week and also the rain for Sunday. That's still way out there to the northwest and this one will eventually again work its way on in here and give us that chance for some rain. So today lots of sunshine and uh, clear skies overnight. Tomorrow we start off pretty good, but then clouds thicken up very quickly throughout the day and will stay fairly cloudy then or stay cloudy all night and the rain moves on in here on Sunday with a couple of those showers late to tomorrow night actually and by Sunday morning it is going to be wet. It is going to be cold. Temperatures will be well above freezing 40 here in town, but then basically not moving all day long, maybe mid 40s throughout the afternoon, and it pretty much all stays in the form of rain, perhaps just a couple of spots. This is not going to be a big deal as far as any frozen precipitation needs snow or any sleep mixed in a couple little spots here and there. And again, we're talking in the extreme northern portion of our viewing area, and that will be through Sunday evening about dinner time, and then we'll start off with some clouds on Monday and clear on out after that and get a secondary kind of shove of some colder air. So here's what the upper level winds look like. There's the low again. They gave us the uh, cooler temperatures earlier on in the week. And then there's that next low, which is coming in here from the uh, Pacific Northwest. It helps to increase the clouds tomorrow and it doesn't really move close enough. Earlier in the week, it looked like it was going to be closer to us, which is why earlier in the week it looked like we might be seeing a bit more in the way of some uh, wintry precipitation. But that just things not it's going to be staying a little further up to the north. However, what it will do then going into the first of the week is pull down some cooler air. And what's also interesting is as we go into the latter part of the week, another big mass of cold air is going to start to settle in in toward the Great Lakes, and that should uh, keep us on the colder side. It looks like throughout good chunk of next week. Today, it's going to stay on the cool side. 53 degrees at noon, sunny skies, good looking day and high of 57 degrees. Plenty of sunshine out there, but yeah, keep a jacket handy and uh, it will cool off very quickly once the sun goes down tonight, down to 35 tomorrow morning. Make it up to 54, so clouds will uh, keep temperatures down a few degrees. Some rain late tomorrow night and then pretty much raining most all of the day on Sunday. Just a you know, stay inside, movies, football games. That's good. I mean, pack up Christmas decorations. Yes, I know. Hit, hit, right? <laughs> yeah, and then uh, some cold mornings next week. You guys need to officially let us know when the decorations are down. Okay. Okay. Will you just let us know? <laughs> now there's Hopefully. pressure to take them down. No, it's no pressure. I just, <laughs> that way we can formally move on to putting up whatever is next. Uh, Valentine's? Valentine's. Valentine's. Yeah. That's okay. right. Yeah, we can do that. I just got to get the outdoor ones down. So. All right. <laughs> I bet that's going to happen today. I think it is. That, that's probably yes. best just based on what I'm, I'm guilting, hearing from you. I I'm guilting so. myself into it. <laughs> 620, 36 degrees.
And coming up this morning, President Donald Trump is back on Twitter after a 12-hour suspension. Find out more in today's GMA First Look. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. Every time we pre-rinse, we waste up to 20 gallons. Let's skip the rinse. Finish Quantum with Active Blue technology cleans without pre-rinsing. Switch to finish and skip the rinse to save water. Want to sell the best burger in every zip code? Add an employee. Or 10. Then easily and automatically pay your team and file payroll taxes. That means world domination. Or just the west side. Run payroll in less than five minutes with Intuit QuickBooks. Okay, everyone, our mission is to provide complete balanced nutrition for strength and energy. Yay! Great tasting and sure, with 9 grams of protein, 27 vitamins and minerals, and nutrients to support immune health. For skin that never holds you back, don't settle for silver. Number one for diabetic dry skin. Number one for psoriasis symptom relief. And number one for eczema symptom relief. Gold Bond, champion your skin. In this morning's GMA First Look, I would like to begin by addressing the heinous... President Trump is back on Twitter after a 12-hour like suspension. Americans, I am outraged by the violence. Several of the president's social media accounts were frozen following his online responses to this week's riots at the Capitol. Twitter suspending his account Wednesday night following a series of tweets it described as calls to violence. We're coming for you! Requiring him to delete tweets it says violated the company's policies against interfering with elections or other civic processes and threatening to ban him permanently if he continued to violate its rules. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more on this social media battle. Plus, George Stephanopoulos and Cecilia Vega are tracking every new development in Washington. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rebecca Jarvis, ABC News, New York. And we've been hearing a lot in these past few days about invoking the 25th Amendment. But what you think you may know about the 25th Amendment is likely based on how Hollywood has portrayed it. ABC's Will Gans has more. The only way you're president is if the president himself signs power over to you or you gather the signatures of the cabinet. A scandalous plot point for political dramas in TV and film now in the spotlight in real life. The 25th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution ratified in 1967 addresses an important question. What happens if the president becomes unable to do their job? In Hollywood, the 25th Amendment shows up in the most dramatic of situations, like in White House Down. In Air Force One, it's on the table because President Harrison Ford is busy telling Gary Oldman to get off my plane. And the 25th Amendment is almost enacted back on the ground after being endorsed by a majority of the president's cabinet. But Vice President Glenn Close shuts that down. You go, Glenn Cloclo. And of course, the 25th Amendment takes center stage in the season four finale of The West Wing. My section three of the 25th Amendment which permits through a written declaration to temporarily transfer all powers of the presidency to the next in the constitutional line of succession. Though President Martin Sheen transfers the power himself, unable to perform his presidential duties after his daughter is kidnapped. This current talk of the 25th Amendment is most closely related to Kiefer Sutherland in Designated Survivor Season 2. The majority of the cabinet, sir, they're invoking the 25th Amendment, Section 4. Which allows the president to be ousted on the basis of... Mental incapacity, I know. But in real life, Section 4 of the 25th Amendment has never been enacted. Will Gans, ABC News, New York. 627, 36 degrees. A police officer in Washington, D.C. has died from injuries he received during the attack on the U.S. Capitol building. It comes as more people call on the president to be removed from office. Capital murder is the case against a man accused of shooting and killing an 11-year-old girl. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have the details on his arrest. 
A fifth person, a police officer, now dead in connection with a violent attack on the U.S. Capitol. I'm ABC's Faith Abube, live in Washington, with details coming up. Waking up on a Friday morning to temperatures in the mid 30s here in the city. Truly winter like weather is on the way for part of the weekend. Mike is standing by with the latest on your forecast. Hi, good morning. It is Friday, January 8th. Yay, we made it to Friday. We did. We're also going to talk traffic with Samuel in just a moment. But first up, here's Mike with how our Friday and our weekend are shaping up. Well, Friday's going to be absolutely gorgeous. We are going to have a spectacular sunrise. There is the planet Venus, and we're seeing the glow of the uh, the sunrise, which the sun's going to be coming up in just about an hour or so. And 36 degrees in town, two points at 31. A little bit of a breeze out there. So we actually have a slight wind chill in places. It feels like 32 out there at the airport. 23 is the wind chill right now in Hondo. And there's going to be a puff of a breeze today, but temperatures will be, well, hardly getting up into the 50s. I mean, we'll be in the 50s, but not until later on this afternoon. So it's going to stay chilly, especially throughout the morning and even with a high of only 57 degrees. That's jacket weather. Mountain Cedar, very high. The updated count is going to be coming out in about, um, say, half hour, 45 minutes or so and see what those winds yesterday did to those mountain cedar trees. Beautiful today, but yet yeah, is going to be on the cool side or chilly side, if you will, upper 50s. And then tomorrow we start off with some sunshine, but the clouds move in here very quickly and we'll stay only in the mid 50s. A couple of showers late tomorrow, tomorrow night late and then overnight into Sunday. Pretty much just going to be rain all day and temperatures will only be in the low to mid 40s. It's going to be a cold day and that uh, wintry precipitation, the odds of that, it's going to be kind of a gee whiz thing at best. And the odds are not that good. And if anything, it's going to be well up there to the uh, north of us. So uh, that's not going to be too much of a concern. Just kind of Put an extra blanket on the bed Sunday. That's going to be the concern. It's going to stay cold next week as well. Details on that coming up. Time saver traffic right now. And Samuel King, what's going on, sir? Well, Mike, we have a new uh, crash that's being reported. This is at uh, 410 at Fredericksburg Road, actually on Fredericksburg Road there. So uh, you can see a little bit of a slowdown there. So let's take a look. Uh, if you're on Fredericksburg Road traveling between uh, Woodlawn and Hebner now, 13 uh, minutes going uh, northbound and then 14 minutes going southbound. So something to watch out for in that area as things get busier. Let's take a look at some travel times. 26 minutes if you're coming in from New Braunfels to downtown San Antonio. 30 minutes on I-10 from Seguin. 29 minutes if you're coming in from Floresville. And 30, uh, 17 minutes on 35 from Lytle. And here's a look at that accident scene there. 410 at Fredericksburg. So again, something to watch out for as you start your commute this morning. Mark Stephanie, over to you. San Antonio police have caught up with a man who they believe was responsible for the death of an 11 year old girl. They say he's one of two men who opened fire on her family's car in the northeast side. Back in August, the girl died in front of her siblings. Mark Katrina Weber is live at the Bear County Jail with more on his arrest. But you say police are still searching for answers, Katrina. Well, that's right. The arrest affidavit doesn't seem to offer any explanation for why that family's car was targeted. Now, what it does say is that police are still searching for that second gunman. The man who they have in custody is 22-year-old Demoria Keys. He was arrested last night and is being held here at the Bear County Jail on a capital murder charge in the death of 11-year-old Danita Phillips. Her parents spoke to Case at 12 News shortly after this happened back in August. They were grief-stricken and also puzzled about why someone would take aim at their car. They told us they had no problems with anyone, and this was not a case of road rage. Danita was one of several children in the car at the time. Her parents told us that her siblings had to watch her die. The affidavit shows that police identified Keys as a suspect through surveillance video and some tips that they received. And again, they say that they know there was a second gunman based on that video, but they still are trying to figure out who he is. Reporting live at the Bear County Jail, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Also new this morning, the Bear County Sheriff's Office says they have arrested a man accused of shooting and killing two people. 20-year-old James Miller was arrested, and according to an arrest affidavit, Deputy Say Miller and another suspect who was already arrested shot and killed a 20-year-old man and 14-year-old teen on the northeast side on December 17th. Deputies say the shooting happened on Rubens Drive near Montgomery and Gibbs Sprawl during a marijuana deal. This morning, we've learned that a police officer in Washington, D.C. has died after the violent attack on the Capitol by a pro-Trump mob. 
Meanwhile, President Donald Trump appears to be accepting his election loss as calls grow for him to step down immediately for inciting violence. ABC's Faith Abube has more. Good morning. As the fallout continues, multiple sources are telling ABC News both Democrats and Republicans are discussing ways to remove the president from office. This morning, outrage as more details come to light about the deadly attack on the U.S. Capitol. Investigators finding five guns, including a military-style assault rifle, two pipe bombs, and 11 Molotov cocktails. More than 50 police officers hurt during the clashes with a violent pro-Trump mob. And Thursday evening, 42-year-old Officer Brian Sicknick succumbing to injuries, making five deaths. To those who engage in the acts of violence and destruction, you do not represent our country. In a new video, President Trump condemning the same angry mob he riled up with repeated false claims about a stolen election. Democrats calling for impeachment while also looking to Vice President Mike Pence to invoke the 25th Amendment. Thursday, the president finally accepting his election loss. My focus now turns to ensuring a smooth, orderly, and seamless transition of power. And now, with just 12 days till President-elect Joe Biden's inauguration, a seven-foot fence going up around the Capitol and questions about police conduct. And officers have arrested more than 80 people so far, but the Capitol Hill police chief now resigning because of the botched response. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. In your other morning headlines, 2020 tied a record for the warmest year on record. That's according to the European Copernicus Climate Change Service. Press release from the group also notes 2010 through last year was the warmest decade in history. Although the northern hemisphere had higher than usual temperatures in 2020, sections of the southern hemisphere experienced below average temperatures. That was due to La Nina conditions that emerged during the latter half of the year. An Iraqi judge has issued an arrest warrant for President Donald Trump. The warrant is for the death of an Iraqi military leader killed during the assassination of Iranian General Qasem Soleimani last year. Iran has also issued an arrest warrant for President Trump over the results of the targeted airstrike. The federal government's latest jobs report is due out today, and the latest look at jobs across America is not expected to be a good one. Economists surveyed by Reuters think it will show about 77,000 jobs created in December. That would be the smallest gain since the recovery started in May. Boeing says it will pay $2.5 billion to settle criminal charges it defrauded regulators about the 737 MAX aircraft. The settlement is with the U.S. Justice Department, a U.S. attorney says two Boeing employees gave, quote, misleading statements, half-truths, and omissions, end quote, regarding the 737 Air Max. Now, she says the misinformation prevented the Federal Aviation Administration from ensuring public safety, resulting in two crashes in which hundreds of people died. For the first time in five years, gas mileage for new cars has dropped while emissions have risen. On average, vehicles across the 2019 model year saw mileage slip to just under 25 miles per gallon. Part of the reason, Americans are buying more trucks and SUVs and shifting away from more efficient vehicles. Hyundai's stock is skyrocketing after reports it is in early talks with Apple to develop self-driving electric cars. Several news outlets reported that the South Korean automaker confirmed it was talking to Apple. In a statement, Hyundai said it was receiving proposals for cooperation from various companies, but no decision has been made yet. Last month, Hyundai unveiled engineering for a series of new electric cars. Right now it's just about 640, 36 degrees. The home service industry booming during the pandemic as many people look to renovate their spaces. After the break, how you can get involved if you're looking for a new career. As we turn the calendar to the new year, it's time for many people to look for a new start in their careers. When evaluating new fields, consider those within home service. According to a recent Angie's List survey, demand for the home services industry is up. If you considered a career in the skilled trades, now may be the time to make that leap. Not only is the industry thriving, but the need for skilled tradespeople will continue to increase as the current workforce ages towards retirement. Approximately 53% of skilled workers are currently over the age of 45. Jobs in the skilled trades are in high demand. Carpentry, masonry, HVAC, electrical, even plumbing all have great benefits, including job security and high wages. Most people focus on college, but skilled trades can offer an equally as rewarding alternative with broad options. 
Don't be intimidated by the training required to enter the skilled trades. Many of the programs are low cost or also have earn as you learn opportunities. Maybe an entirely new career isn't right for you just yet, but you're ready to start out on your own. As you begin your planning, make sure to set yourself up for success. Research what's required for you to operate within local and state regulations. Also, be sure to understand any insurance and permitting requirements. Ensuring that your new business can be successful during changing times may also require you to adopt new tools. Utilizing online tools is more important than ever. Understanding how to handle reputation management, scheduling, even video conferencing are becoming important tools of the trade. One important aspect of running a successful business these days is managing your online reputation. You've started your business, you're doing good work, now's the time to ask your customers for reviews. Have them share their experiences with you and really start to build your reputation. And we want to invite you to join us for our virtual mental health awareness town hall. It's a hardship millions of Americans live with but have trouble talking about. We will have a panel of experts to explain mental illness and share how you can make a difference. It's all Wednesday, January 27th at 2 p.m. More information is on ksatcommunity.com. Well, let's go ahead and check traffic with Samuel King. Uh, good morning, uh, everyone. We still have a situation at 410 and Fredericksburg Road. Uh, we have a crash here and some delays are starting to build. And here's a look at the trans guide uh, view of this. You can see the uh, police activity there. Uh, looks like the, this is off of 410, but still something to watch out for if you travel in that area. And if you're traveling uh, this weekend, you might notice that gas prices have ticked up a little bit. The average price across the state is now 199. If it gets to two dollars per gallon and that could happen in the next few days will be the first time since last March. So 300 days and also it's been the longest stretch of that since 2005, 15 years. Uh, it's a little cheaper in Bear County, but if you go up to the Hill Country, it's already at two dollars per gallon and Texas does have some of the lowest gas prices in the country at two dollars 30 cents a gallon. So something to keep in mind this weekend. It's costing a little more for the gas guys. Remember back when was it uh, 13, 14 years ago, something like that, when gas was like four bucks a gallon? Yeah, oh, that's, yes. and that's oh. when it started. That that's when the, it was the first time ever was two dollars per gallon and then it just went up from there. At that round so that these look pretty good. Yeah, these are pretty good. <laughs> it's all comparison. about perspective, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, when you think about, it, I mean, given inflation going back, you know, I, I think well, like when I was in high school and gas was a buck a gallon or something right. like that. This is actually cheaper than that when yep. you factor in when inflation. Adjusted. Yep. So, mm -hmm. yeah. all right, uh, take a look at this picture. And uh, this was from a couple of days ago. And some beautiful uh, big clouds building up there. But the thing to take note is those beautiful blue skies that we've had the past couple of days. And we're going to have a, a gorgeous day again today. Case in point, look at the sunrise. There is the planet Venus and uh, just spectacular out there. So take your sunglasses and grab a coat. Now, as far as the humidity in the atmosphere, obviously very dry air that allows temperatures to drop down because you can't drop down. Temperatures can't drop down below what dew point temperatures are, and they are going to definitely be staying on the low side. Come back up a little bit on uh, Sunday, and that's going to help to keep temperatures above freezing in the morning on Sunday. So with the moisture coming in here, we're not going to have to worry about any uh, freezing precipitation or anything. There may be a little bit later on in the afternoon. More on that in a second. But then we get another shot of colder air coming in here. So with these dew points lower, that's going to allow for some cold mornings, uh, especially once again next week. Here's the uh, satellite picture. Nothing on there. Not much really around the country. The big storm system off to the northeast of us. That's what brought us the rain a couple of days ago and pulled that front on in here. And then our next system is actually way up here in the Pacific Northwest, and that will be moving on in uh, today. Lots of cloud, lots of sunshine. Beg your pardon. And then tomorrow we start off with sunshine. Then we get lots of clouds to move in uh, as the day progresses. Actually, I think pretty early in the morning. We'll start off with that sunshine, but then the clouds move on in here and uh, we'll have some rain starting to move into the area uh, as the night goes into Sunday morning. And then on Sunday, we'll have just a lot of rain around the area. And like I said, temperature is going to be well above freezing. Now this computer model again, here's Fredericksburg. So well north of there Sunday morning, a little bit of that mixed precipitation 
And then throughout the afternoon, maybe a little bit of that kind of uh, scraping into our northern counties. So perhaps a little bit of some uh, sleet or some snow mixed in up there well up to the north. But that's pretty much going to be about it. This is not going to be a huge wintry precipitation event around here. It's just going to be a cold, wet day. I mean, one of those bone chilling kind of days. The temperatures, you know, like I said, we stay well above freezing, but then don't move all that much throughout the day on Sunday. Today, 53 at noon, sunny skies and a high temperature. We get up to 57, a little bit of a breeze out of the, uh, the north. So coat's a pretty good idea. We'll start off cold again tomorrow morning and what little bit of clear skies we have in the morning, that won't last very long because the clouds move on in here and that's going to help to hold temperatures down in the mid 50s tomorrow. And then rain moves in overnight and pretty much rain most all of the day on Sunday and only 45 degrees. Ouch. So yeah. if you got a new book for Christmas and haven't turned a page yet, <laughs> Sunday is prime reading day. Yeah, you're not going to want to go outside because it's that damp cold too that yeah. sneaks down the back of your neck and mm -hmm. then cold starts uh, next week. Too. You notice even when he's after all these years when he talks about it, he kind of <laughs> well, I mean, scrunches kinda... up physically like <laughs> closing the gap because you do that when it when it's cold. Yes. It's kind of like when, you're, when it. It's raining. Right. Why do you go like that? Why do you pull your shrug your shoulders up? I think I did the same thing like in the last segment talking about the cold weather. But even yeah. talking, you kind of, yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. That was almost like Churchill there for a second. Uh, 649, 60, uh, 36 degrees, not 63. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's cold. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the chances of a person going back to prison after being released is nearly 70% in the U.S. Tomorrow on GMSA, we will look at how one woman is using technology to break the prison cycle and how it's saving U.S. taxpayers money. And our understudy for the Prime Minister this morning will be Mike Osterhage. <laughs> Get it, Mike. Outside right now, the news you need to know before you go is coming up and more traffic with Samuel. Good Friday morning to you. Coming up here on GMA, we are following the latest developments on the Capitol Police officer dying from injuries sustained defending the People's House. And this morning, the calls are growing louder for President Trump's removal from office with just 12 days to go. He finally condemned the attacks by his supporters and concedes his election loss for the first time. Also, some new resignations from the White House to tell you about this morning. You'll see that and so much more coming up right here on GMA. A man is ejected from his vehicle and rushed to a hospital following a crash here in far West Bear County. Now details are still limited, but we can tell you that crash happened here at Shane Field near Cavan Hill earlier this morning. Now the Bear County Sheriff's Office as well as Holotus PD were all on the scene. They tell us the man had been driving in the area when his car had rolled over. It was during that time the man was then ejected. There's still many unknown factors surrounding the crash. It's not clear what his condition was at the time or if speed has played a factor. Now again, and there is still unlimited information this morning, but as more details become available, we'll be sure to keep you posted. For now, reporting in far West Bear County, Stephen Cavasso's KSAT 12 News. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says they have arrested a man accused of shooting and killing two people. 20-year-old James Miller was arrested, and according to an arrest affidavit, deputies say Miller and another suspect who was already arrested shot and killed a 20-year-old man and 14-year-old teen on the northeast side on December 17th. Deputies say the shooting happened on Rubens Drive near Montgomery and Gibbs Sprawl Road during a drug deal. It's now 5 till. Let's check traffic with Samuel. Uh, good morning, guys. Before we head out here, we have this uh, crash here at Fredericksburg Road at Loop 410, but it looks like it's going to be clearing out here shortly, so that's something you won't have to worry about. And look at some travel times. If you're coming in from Belverding at 281, 29 minutes, 27 minutes from New Braunfels, 29 minutes on I-10 from Seguin, and 24 minutes on I-10 from Bernie. Mike. What a way to start off a Friday. Gorgeous out there. Beautiful sunrise in store and it is cold. 31 in Valverde, mid 20s in parts of the hill country. 32 Helotus and we are at 36 degrees right now. There's a hint of a wind chill, just a little bit of a breeze, but keep a jacket handy all day long. 57. That's it today. Plenty of sunshine though. And then clouds are going to be thickening up throughout the day. Tomorrow we stay in the mid 50s, only mid 40s on Sunday. It's going to be wet and cold. Maybe a little bit of mix way up in northern portions of the hill country, but otherwise basically just wet and cold and we just got to go back to this picture right there ah, that's a good choice <laughs> yes i think so well, it's going to be a interesting weekend that's for sure <laughs> yeah just stay inside do a jigsaw puzzle that's a good advice i think i might delay my run on saturday morning good idea a little warmer <laughs> you guys have a great weekend we'll see you back here at nine <laughs>